Right. In this video, I'm gonna show you what type of cable you should and you should not use with your pan tilt zoom camera. Here I have a infrared pan tilt zoom camera. It has IRs right here. It moves around, does all that great stuff. There's a pigtail coming out of the camera. If you ever lift a pan tilt zoom camera, make sure you're not hanging it with the pigtail. You're actually holding it from the base or from the collar that protrudes out of the camera here. I'll take it off for a second to show you. Right there. So you should grab the camera here and always hold it like this. Do not hold it by the wire, otherwise you're gonna damage the wire. But let me show you exactly how to power the camera and run a wire. A lot of customers have pre-existing cable. And in this case, this is a pre-made wire. What is a pre-made wire? Where the ends are pre-made. This is a power end and this is a video end. It's prefabricated and connected from the factory. What happens is you can't use this wire when using a coax pantal zoom camera, especially one with IR that requires a lot of um, voltage and amperage coming through. So this is about a hundred foot of wire. The other end is right here. I'm going to connect my power supply into the end of one, the wire, let's say it would be inside the home. Wire goes through wherever and then connects to the camera. This is the video. So this is a B and C. I'm connecting that and then I'm connecting the power. And I'm gonna wait for it to turn on. Watch the camera as it tries to boot up. You can see on the DVR, these lines pop up. And there's a message set that says resolution is automatically adjusted. So while it's doing that in the background, I'll keep showing you that, but let's look at the camera. The camera's not moving. Normally when pan tilt zoom cameras boot up and you connect the power to them, they start swiveling around doing a boot up process. This camera has not done any of that, even though I've connected power. All I'm seeing is we still continue to just see colored bars. They vanish. It's doing something. It's there's something going on, but still. And now it says loading. It says CVI right there. Let's look that closely. It says CVI right there, vanish. But no video still. And the camera still hasn't started moving. Well, if you're, happening, you're having this happen with your camera, that means your cable that you're using is insufficient to power the camera. And the reason behind that is it doesn't have enough copper. Maybe it doesn't have enough copper. Most, if the camera's not moving at all, that means there's not enough copper in the wire that's providing the power. So it'll be these red leads. Now let me show you what happens if I plug in the power supply, you know, this is my power supply, directly into the camera. the pigtail coming out of the camera. I'm connecting it directly to the power supply. The power supply is a 12 volt, five amp. It's more than adequate to power a PTZ camera over a hundred foot of wire. So now let's look at both things that are happening. It's a, it started moving and I actually noticed a CVI message come in on the monitor. It takes a few minutes the camera has to boot up and those bars do go away and then come back with actual video from the pan tilt zoom. So let's look at this message here. It says CVI right there. It's kind of blurry, but it's there. That tells you that your DVR is now sensing the signal from the pan tilt zoom camera and you actually now see video. The camera is still booting up. It takes anywhere from two to five minutes depending on the model of the camera. Now you see a boot up screen, it says configuring on the bottom. That means the camera is in fact booting up and it says configuring done. So it's finished booting up. Once you see this on-screen display menu, that means, and you get that message configure done, that means your camera is done booting up. Some cameras may have an alarm message, you can ignore that, I'll show you how to turn that off later. But after a couple of minutes of it connecting, depending on your DVR, you can do right click and do PTZ control. Log into the DVR using your password. And then you should be able to control it. Right. 
I can zoom in, zoom out. The Pantel zoom camera seems to be working fine. And again, how do you get into it? Right click, PTZ control. And then you move the camera around. That's it. You don't have to do anything in terms of going into a PTZ menu like this, going to the main menu, camera, Pantel zoom. None of that needs to be done. Nothing has to be set here. This camera, as a matter of fact, is connected on channel two. I didn't set any of that. It automatically detected that it's HD CVI and 3.0. So how do you get rid of this alarm message? You right click, go to PTZ control, click on the PTZ icon, and in here, go into alarm setting. Change the contact to NC. Exit and that message goes away. So what did we learn from here? The main takeaway point here is you've got to be very careful about the cable you use. So although I'm using a 12 volt 5 amp, if your cable is not able to properly conduct power over the copper inside of that wire or whatever aluminum it has, it's not going to send a, a correct amount of voltage and amperage to the camera and the camera is not going to boot up. You're going to see signs of malfunction. Depending on the camera and the type it is, you may just see colored bars. It may not give you any video. So you cannot use, in fact, a pre-made cable of any type. This happens to be a 4K compatible uh, pre-made cable that works fine with our stationary 4K cameras, but as soon as you step up to even a 1080p PTZ, which this was, it's not going to boot up properly. So what kind of cable do you need? You need a actual Siamese wire that has certain markings on it and it comes out of a roll. Let me turn this wire around to show you what it has. It says RG59U Siamese on it. You can kind of see that right there. Here we go. And it also has, it says 1C20 AWG. So that's one copper conductor, that's 20 gauge, that's for the video. And 2C18 AWG, that means it has two copper conductors that are 18 gauge. So you need this type of wire. This is really what it looks like when I strip the wire out. It has this connection here, which is a B and C. Oh, sorry, it's a coax RG59U. This is a 20 gauge. And this is what terminates into a B and C connection. Okay. And then here are two 18 gauge wires for power. Red is gonna be positive, black is gonna be negative. That you then terminate into a cable similar to this. So you can connect it to your Pantel zoom camera. With this conduction, with the proper conduction over this 18 gauge power wire, you're gonna be able to conduct proper current and amperage to your Pantel zoom camera and ensure that it operates properly the way it's meant to. Hopefully this helps you with understanding what kind of cables are required for use with your Pantel zoom camera that's a coax based Pantel zoom camera and you understand any troubleshooting steps you'll need to do. So before we end that video, let's just show you something else you could do. If you have that pre-made wire and you're able to get video working across the wire, but you can't get power to work across it, what you can do is use this cable. So this is 18 gauge, two copper conductors, and this is what it looks like. It's basically this wire right here. This is 18 gauge, same thing you find in the power portion of a Siamese wire, but all this is just the power portion, two conductors, 18 gauge, this will work with sending proper power to your Pantel zoom camera. Again, thanks for watching.